Greetings from Snake Mountain Boat Works on Wednesday, January 29, 2020. Here is the promised update on the bottom damage to our 1947 Chris U22. Uh, how best to say it? Well, I guess just say it as you have to say it. The plot thickens. Uh, we managed to deconstruct a lot of this area and what we find and what we're learning uh, necessarily makes this uh, repair job uh, it's, it's actually transformative. It's become a much, much larger uh, effort overall. One and we knew we'd encounter this if, in fact, this was an original bottom. Well, you see the canvas. This is an original bottom. The uh, inner planking on the, on, in the bilge is a telltale. The real telltale is that there are literally thousands of these little tiny screws that come up from beneath these uh, planks that are running, on, let's say, on the bias. We can see some here. They're, all those little holes, those are all screws. And this was Chris Craft's way of sealing their trademarked, super secret, priority, uh, proprietary, excuse me, material, which is basically just canvas soaked in some kind of goop, um, to the outer planking. So every place you see a hole is one of these little tiny screws. They're about, uh, I don't, we, I don't find a, uh, an example here to show you because we've been cleaning up as we go along. Um, so that's one challenge. Anywhere we work, we're going to encounter this ca canvas and all of those nails. Uh, taking them out one at a time is uh, just incredibly time consuming, but it gets worse. And this is what we've discovered and pretty much what we've concluded. And here is a prima facie example of why when somebody walks into the shop towing his or her beloved Woody behind uh, him or her and looks at me and says, tell me how much it's going to cost to put a new bottom on this boat. Tell me how much it's going to cost to repair this, to repair that to make it all shiny again, uh, tell me how much it's going to cost to completely restore this boat. And I, every time, have to say, I'll tell you how much it's going to cost at the other end. There's just no way to know. And here's an example. This frame is totally broken. This frame is totally broken. So that's easy. We'll just release the frames and make new ones using these as patterns. Well, not quite because this frame runs all the way out and attaches to the chine frame. So, release this little puppy right here, and behind it we find the chine frame, big hunk of white oak, and for both of those, for, for both of those frames, as well as this one back here, we will discover that Having released this, and this runs
full length without a joint. So the next step is to release this on both sides full length. Save it very carefully. And then we will expose screws that screw into the end of each of these frames. And Joe was looking at this and I, he was down underneath and he said, Michael, there's no more frames until we get way, way up, way, way up there. And that's a, a chronic issue with the U22 model for reasons I will never fathom. Chris maybe in an attempt to save money I, I just don't understand it but there's a frame here and then the next frame is clear up here so that's uh, it's a good two feet maybe 28 inches and the next frame is right here and the next frame is right here on 12 inch centers if you remember the Brightside U-22, as we called her, the 1946, that we had major frame issues uh, that we discovered once we exposed them. We actually fabricated a frame right here that added immense stiffness to the bottom. But let me get back to my story. We, we face having to release the trim piece and the chine plank on both sides to fully expose these frame members. So now we have to take it right up to the water line effectively and release it. On top of that We are encountering, of course, this damaged keel. Yes, could we sister something sort of right here? Yeah, but there's not a frame behind it. Hence the argument for adding a frame. But the real problem is that these two blocks, which add a lot of stiffness and integrity to the aft components of the boat also run all the way to and are affixed to the hull through fasteners that come through the outside. Well, if I'm going to release these, which I must, because they're, they're broken on both sides, I must release everything between the keel and the chine. Except for the fact that between the keel and the chine run three more planks. This one is full length. The next two are, let me walk up here, the next two this one ends in, in the area where the other joints we talked about yesterday are, but the two outboard planks are full length. We have to remove them completely. Well, at this point, what do we have left? Let's walk up forward. So we can reduce, uh, re excuse me, we can release this plank to here. The next two planks are released all the way forward. And at that point, we have 
removed the entire bottom planking save for save for one, two, three short planks. And remember, beneath each of these, we have the canvas. We've got these screws screwed facing up. And to try to sort of fit canvas back in or just cut canvas out in these areas and leave this the way it is now uh, is just not the correct way to go at this. The correct way, I'm sorry to say, to go at this involves removing all the planking from the bottom at this point. We have no choice and all the planking includes the chine outer trim and the chine plank. They all must be removed so that we can get at the area that we have to that we have to repair back here. We are hopeful that having released the bottom plank, the bottom transom plank, that we can get at this. It was attached here and there are a series of screws that come down but my concern is there's a, a thwart bow frame piece that runs across the top of the transom and I'm willing to bet you it is secured vertically. So we are at this point hoping with a very, very, very small H that we can repair this without having to remove it completely. I'd say the probability of doing that and having it provide the kind of strength right here. Just think of what's going on right here on the boat. You've got the prop, you've got the strut, you've got the prop shaft running through, and you have the rudder. Just think of all the forces being visited on the wooden framing in this area. I just don't see it as an area to sister and, and scarf and do those things. This should really be replaced completely. But that now leads us to the larger question. Once you have all of the bottom planking off and uh, in response to the one comment that why in hell do we try to save old wood? Uh, we save old wood because old boats have old wood. The, the trailer queens who come prancing by saying, oh, look at me, all new frames, all new topside planking, all new transom planking, oh, all new deck planking on my beautiful 1934 XYZ. And they bring it to me and expect me to exclaim with them and I say, isn't it too bad? What a tragedy. This boat's been destroyed. We save original wood everywhere possible. And the bottom planking on this boat is in absolutely superb condition. We can save it. But once we have it all off, then we can... Sorry. We can choose, all of this canvas will come off. We can try to carefully release these pieces. Um, if there's any oil in the bilge, it has soaked into these pieces of wood. The, and there's not much, if you look at a previous video on this boat, this is quite a dry bilge, but even so, You've got everything exposed. How far away are we from doing a true 5200 bottom? You've done all the deconstruction necessary. 
The only next step is just pop these guys off. I can tell you from experience, they pop off easily. The more of these that we get off, the better we can work here. And in fact, just to do the repairs, we will have to release We will have to release these guys. Uh, this one will have to go. Everything after it has to go. Uh, this one's got quite a bit of oil in it. I would not save this. Uh, that one's got quite a bit of oil in it. I haven't looked at the other side. My gut says to me, this is fixed properly by tearing all of this inner planking off, laying down a sheet of four millimeter Aquatech Maranti plywood, bedded in 5200, and then reinstalling these guys after we've cleaned them, and you know the drill, flood, 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 and flood some more with clear penetrating epoxy sealer. Lay them down properly, bedded in 5200, and now you've got a bottom that will last indefinitely. Indefinitely. Uh, assuming that the bottom doesn't once again find the rocks. So, our recommendation to our owner will be that we continue. Removing planks, well actually we have no choice. We cannot fix the damage to the ass end of this boat unless and until we can get at it. And we cannot get at it unless and until all the planking, all but, what did I say, three short planks in the nose, all the rest of the planking is released about half of the inner planking is released, and that's on both sides, not just one side. Chine plank has to be released. The chine has to be released, and that will get us to the, to the chine frame. Once we're there, then we can begin fabricating frame members, uh, once we're completely naked, then we can work on repairing the, uh, the keel. The fortunate thing is this, this is the tail end of the keel, and if we can get some support under it with an additional, additional frame, then I feel comfortable scarfing an, a piece from about where this meets the keel back to the transom and ha having a really strong result, probably stronger than it was originally. So that's where we are on January 29, 2020, as we endeavor to repair and restore this beautiful 1947 Chris Craft U-22 back to her original glory. We'll keep you apprised as developments surface on this project. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now from Snake Mountain Boatworks.